So in the first section of our lecture topic, benign lesions of vulva and vagina, we will talk about some epithelial disorders of the vulva. And in this section, we will talk about what's the classification and etiology of some uh, vulval epithelial disorders. And then we will also talk about what's the condition known as lichen planus and lichen sclerosis and vulval intraepithelial neoplasia and vulval lichen. So in this first uh, diagram, this is the vulval epithelial uh, disorder showing different atypical changes in the vulval epithelium. The epithelium of the vulva is uh, made up of four layers. Four layers, the uh, one is the stratum basal, bas basal layer, then we have also stratum corneum, uh, spinosum, and stratum granulosum. So these are the four layers that make up the epithelium of the vulva. And uh, uh, these cells, some special cells are also present in the epithelium of the vulva. And these cells are like uh, Merkel cells, we have melanocyte cells, and Langerhan cells. These are three special types of cells which are present in the vulval epithelium. So whenever there is disorder, usually the uh, lining of the uh, these, uh, layers of the cells, they are affected. And you can see the uh, actual stratification of the cells is lost, polarity is lost, and there is cellular atypia present. Now the classification is uh, depending on the neoplastic and non-neoplastic disorders. So non-neoplastic epithelial disorders means which are not neoplasm or cancerous disorders. We have spongiotic which include atopic dermatitis and contact dermatitis. So non-neoplastic disorders of the epithelium be divided into uh, different types. The one first is spongiotic in which there is atopic dermatitis and contact dermatitis. Then the second is acanthotic pattern which is further divided into psoriasis and it's lichen simplex chronicus. Then the lichenoid pattern is lichen sclerosis and then lichen planus. Granulomatous pattern is Crohn's disease. Vasculopathic pattern is aphthous ulcer and Bassett's disease, also plasma cell vulvitis. Then others are dermal sclerosis pattern, and then we have vesiculobulbulous pattern, vesiculobulous pattern. Then acantholytic pattern. So these are the classification of epidermal disorders of the vulva. And in this, the non-neoplastic are further subdivided into spongiotic, acanthotic, lichenoid, granulomatous, vasculopathic, and others. And they are further subdivided and include some common disorders like contact dermatitis, atopic dermatitis, then psoriasis is also getting very, very common now. It's a skin disorder with white scaly lesions, psoriasis. And then we have uh, lichen sclerosis, lichen planus, Crohn's disease, aphthous ulcers in which the ulcers are present in the mouth and esophagus. So these are all the non-neoplastic epithelial disorders. Etiology. Etiology is uh, uh, multiple factors in which we have trauma, 
Trauma is mainly like scratching whenever there is itching. Scratching is common that can lead to uh, traumatic lesions. Then we have autoimmune, autoimmune uh, allergic like atopic dermatitis, then irritation, nutritional disorders, and infection, in which fungal infection is very common. So causes of uh, epithelial disorders of vulva, we have uh, scratching, irritation, infection, uh, and then uh, nutritional disorders. Then autoimmune disorder, autoimmune. Auto means self, immune is the system that protects against different infections. Autoimmune disorder are the disorders in which your own body start uh, fighting or the, 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 uh, your own body start uh, destroying the immune system and the uh, immunity against different infections get lower. So autoimmune disorders. These are, we have thyroid disease, then pernicious anemia, diabetes, all these are autoimmune uh, disorders that can lead to uh, changes or epithelial changes of the vulva. Then history of atopic conditions. We have like asthma, eczema, and hay fever. Then certain drugs can also bring the changes which are beta blockers, uh, ACE con uh, inhibitors, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. These are the drugs used for mainly high blood pressures or hypertension. So next is lichen sclerosis. Lichen sclerosis. If you see the picture here, these are the different, uh, is, is the condition in which there is thinning of the skin. You can see these scratches also, lightening and thinning of the screen. Then we have bruises and cuts are present in lichen sclerosis. The entire vulva is involved and lesions usually encircle the vestibule. Clitoris and labia minora and inner aspects of the labia. Skin around the anus is also involved in this. Does not involve vestibule, vagina or anal canal. So lichen sclerosis, if you see in this diagram, different, it involves the entire vulva is involved, especially uh, clitoris, vestibule, labia minora, and inner aspects of the labia. And then things, these are usually lesions are caused by itching. Pruritus or itching is very common when scratching is done. Usually patient present with these cuts and uh, bruises. And there is thinning of the skin also. It extends to the perineal area also. So per perineum is this all area. It can spread to the perineum. And beyond the labiocrural fold of the thigh. So uh, the uh, side where the thigh starts, it can extend to that region. So lichen sclerosis is a condition in which the patient present with pruritus, itching. As a result of that, there is scratching and scratching can lead to different cuts and bruises and thinning of the skin. Very common in the areas around the vulva. It involves entire vulva, it involves labia minora, vestibule, clitoris, and it can even extend to the labio um, uh, crural fold, where the uh, 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 portion between where the thigh starts and there is a crease in between that area. So it involves all that area. It also involved only in 18% trunk and limbs. 
Now the histology and clinical feature is pruritus. As I mentioned, it's very, very common. And as a result of that uh, pruritus or itching, patients scratch a lot and it can lead to uh, bruises, cuts, and thinning of the skin. There is active inflammation with erythema. Erythema is the redness. So inflammation is there and with the erythema or the redness. Dyspironia is there due to stenosis. Stenosis is narrowing. As a result of all these changes, there is a narrowing of the vulval outlet and that can lead to dyspironia or painful sexual intercourse. There is sleeplessness and dysuria because of all this discomfort and patient is itching all the time, it can lead to sleeplessness and dysuria, burning uh, of uh, urination, burning or difficulty in urination. Then difficulty with micturition, same as dysuria. Retention of urine because of dysuria, if the patient has difficulty in passing urine, what happens? They try to control the urination and they try to keep the urine uh, in the bladder. So that leads to basically retention of the urine. Narrowing of vaginal introitus and the diagnosis is done by biopsy of the tissues. Then the another condition is lichen planus. Lichen planus again is an inflammatory condition uh, that involves mainly the um, nails, hair and skin. Hair, nails and skins are involved and usually presents with lesions that are violet in color, purple in color and they have a level top. So this is the picture you can see. It's, it's the classic lichen planus, purplish lesions with the level top, flat top papules again. These are lichen planus. This is the nail scarring as a result of lichen planus. It also affects the mouth and there is um, uh, white lacy appearance and there is erosion in the mouth. Here, this is the appearance of lichen planus in the mouth. Also on the back here you can see this is hyperpigmentation or it's velvet or brownish purpley color. Uh, flat top lesions, lichen planus, involve hair, nails, and the skin. Then another is extra uh, mammary Paget's disease. Paget's disease of the breast is very common. That's why this is known as extra mammary, other than the breast. Mammary is the breast tissue, mammary gland or breast tissue. So extra mammary Paget's uh, disease, and it's diagnosed by on histology, on microscopic examination. You can see these whitish, uh, shiny, scaly lesions. And then on pictures, we have the Paget cells are present. These are the Paget cells. Paget cells are the cells with the uh, big uh, 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 center, clear cytoplasm, clear hollow, and then there is eccentric uh, nucleus on the si uh, sides. So this is the Paget cells, and it's diagnosed by the presence of Paget cells. Then the other condition, vulval intraepithelial neoplasia, as we mentioned before also, these are the changes in the epithelial layer or lining of the vulva. You can see different atypical cells, loss of stratification, loss of polarity, and there is a dysplasia of the cells different atypical cells are present. So it's vulval intraepithelial neoplasia. Then another condition is plasma cell vulvitis. Again, you can see there is a reddish uh, ulceration and scarring 
of the vulva in leading to inflammation of the vulva and plasma cells are present in this plasma cells are present and plasma cells again they have uh, eccentric nucleus and central clear cytoplasm so plasma cells are present in uh, zones vulvitis and this is the reddish erythematous lesions are present around the vulva so that was all about the uh, disorders of the vulval epithelium. Thank you for watching scardia.com.